Let's talk about Daniel Jones and the New York Giants because this team is a brand new hard knocks team. Basically, for this offseason and leading up to this season, they're going to talk about the New York Giants on the Mac series. And I do think that this was one of the most interesting teams to go and cover for the NFL for the simple fact that they are a rebuilding team. And just a year ago, they made the NFL playoffs, which was a huge curse looking at it in hindsight. But let's really talk about it. Daniel Jones is not a franchise quarterback. And in the Hard Knock series in episode one, you have the general manager and Joe Shane saying, hey, while we pay Saquon Barkley all of this money when the offensive line is a problem, he even went out and even made the quote and saying this, even if Patrick Mahomes was behind this offensive line, he wouldn't be able to do much. And that is true. But this has been a problem with the Giants, even dating back to the last years with Eli Manning. This offensive line has been terrible. Since 2019, and this is when Daniel Jones was drafted in the same draft class with guys like Dwayne Haskins, rest his soul, and Kyler Murray. He has been the third most sacked quarterback in the NFL. Since 2019, he has been sacked 179 times, and he has suffered injuries. He's coming off a season to where he just tore his ACL because he was getting beat up so much in games. And Daniel Jones is a very good athlete, but I believe at his best, he's just a solid quarterback. He's not going to be their franchise guy for the next four to five years. The reason why I say it was a curse that they made the playoffs the year before and they won a playoff game against the Minnesota Vikings, at that time, it was very exciting. To look at it a year later, it was terrible. Saquon Barkley is no longer here. He is now with the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that is your rival in this division. And Daniel Jones is not the same player without Saquon Barkley. And I came on here a couple months ago and I said this. It would make zero sense for him to keep Saquon Barkley around. For one, he is a running back. You can find a running back in the NFL draft. They can give you solid production scratch the gate. I like them bringing in Devin Singletary. Now, he is no Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley is still one of the best running backs in the game. But you pay a running back when you're trying to make a Super Bowl push. You pay a running back when you have a quarterback that's on a rookie deal. That's not the case for the Giants. Because instead of paying Saquon Barkley all of that money, they paid Daniel Jones all of the money. And I'm not going to come on here and backtrack what I said then. You have to pay your quarterback. The quarterback is more important to every team in the NFL than the running back position. Only so many teams in the NFL have a very good quarterback. And the Giants thought that they had that in Daniel Jones moving forward if Saquon Barkley could go out there and continue to be a rushing threat and a receiving threat as well. That's what made this thing so interesting. Daniel Jones at certain points of times did get carried by Saquon Barkley, but at the same time, when they would stack the box, Daniel Jones would take the football and he would run the football himself. And he was making a lot of big plays in that season. Now, this is a scary thing with Daniel Jones. His best season statistically for passing touchdowns came in his rookie season. He had 24 passing touchdowns to 12 interceptions and 3,027 passing yards. That was it. That's the best season that Daniel Jones has had statistically, passing-wise. The next season in 2020, he only played in 14 games, 11 passing touchdowns to 10 interceptions, but he was sacked 45 times. In 2021, 10 passing touchdowns to 7 interceptions, he was sacked 22 times. And the Giants wouldn't be in this situation if they were to go out there and exercise the fifth-year option. They declined this fifth-year option. Usually when teams do that, they have lost faith in a player. No one expected for him to go out there and have the season that he had and for him to make the NFL playoffs and for them to beat the Minnesota Vikings that season. So it has really hurt the Giants because it's only so much they can do. If they had a better quarterback, they would have possibly went out there and paid Saquon Barkley and it would have better weapons around Daniel Jones. Now, even though Daniel Jones, in my opinion, is not a very good quarterback, only so many quarterbacks can go out there and be in this situation that this kid has been in and still stick around the NFL. For one, we've talked about this before, the sacks. We also have to talk about this as well. He hasn't had a consistent number one wide receiver. No offense to Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton is a solid wide receiver. He's a number two wide receiver at best. He has been their best wide receiver over the last couple of years. They made a move a couple of years ago to go out there and make a trade to go get Kenny Galladay. Well, they didn't trade for him. They went out there and they paid Kenny Galladay a lot of money because he left the Detroit Lions. And Kenny Galladay was a bust. He couldn't catch anymore. He would not run routes to the fullest. And when Brian Dable came over to the Giants, we saw his snap count get cut. And basically, he washed his hands of it. He said, we're a better team without you. 
And at certain points of times in the season, when they made the playoffs, their best wide receiving threat towards the end of that season was Isaiah Hodgins. Him. That was it. And Darius Slayton. So they did not have the top tier weapons. They also went out there last offseason and they traded the third round pick to go get Darren to go get Darren Waller. Darren Waller did not have the best year with the Giants. That was the guy that I always looked at and said, hey, the best years were behind him with the Raiders. But he is now retired. He's no longer here. You do have some solid weapons in that tight end room that I like a lot, but they're young. Daniel Bellinger had a solid rookie season. It was cut short due to an eye injury. You also have Theo Johnson as well, who was a big kid coming out of Penn State. He's 6'6", 264 pounds. I think that you have two very good tight ends there, and they offer you two very different things. Daniel Belger can be a very good receiving threat, but he's more so of a blocking tight end as well. And Theo Jackson can go out there and give you a lot of receiving yards, especially on second and third down. They went into the first round. They drafted Malik Neighbors. I think Malik Neighbors is going to be one of the best rookie wide receivers for this upcoming season. He is phenomenal coming out of LSU. If it wasn't for Marvin Harrison Jr., he would have been the best prospect at the wide receiver wide receiver position in this draft class that is how great he is and he's coming from LSU the last wide receiver that they selected out of LSU was Odell Beckham and I'm not saying that Malik Neighbors are going to be the next Odell Beckham for the New York Giants but Malik Neighbors is going to give the Giants something that they haven't had in a very long time a consistent threat at that receiving position that can play inside and outside the slot primarily inside the slot he's going to give you the ability to take the top off the defense and help out Daniel Jones you also have some other key weapons as well. Jalen Hyatt can take the top off the defense. He's entering year number two, and he has gained weight. And he hasn't lost any speed from the training camp videos. I expect for him to be a very good receiving threat as well. The thing is with the Giants, I don't believe in their offensive line still. John Michael Smith is a solid center. He was a rookie last season. He's going to be a beast at that center position. Andrew Thomas it has been the best offensive lineman since he's been drafted. A very good left tackle. Evan Neal can't guard anyone. Evan Neal is terrible. He's a bust. And you can't really slide him over to guard because he's too big to play guard. He reminds me of Eric Flowers. They selected Eric Flowers in the first round many years ago. He was terrible. Evan Neal may be worse than him. Evan Neal is just a horrible prospect. They did go out there and they brought in a brand new offensive lineman and Jermaine Elamanor. Hopefully he can come over. And he could possibly be a very good tackle. Right now, he's listed to guard, but he could play some tackle as well. We will see. But you can't continue to just go out there and put Daniel Jones in these bad situations. Their offense is very good on paper. But how many times have we heard that in the past? And one thing for sure with Daniel Jones, he can't fully carry the Giants to the next level, especially in this division. That's what makes his future so bleak. I'm not trying to be negative here because they do have some good players. I like their defense. We're going to talk about their defense in just a couple of seconds. Malik Neighbors is a very good player. Devin Singletary is a very good running back, but he's not explosive like how Saquon Barkley was ex explosive. He's going to go out there and get you three to four yards a carry, which is very good. He may even get you over that. And he's going to fit well in the system with Brian Dable because Brian Dable drafted him. And on this season, 898 rushing yards on the season, four rushing touchdowns, 4.2 yards a carry. And he was there with the Buffalo Bills when Brian Dable was the offensive coordinator. And he was hitting the table saying, go out there and draft this kid because he would work very well alongside Josh Allen. But the repair project to Daniel Jones, sometimes quarterbacks are just broken and they can benefit from a change of scenery. I think Daniel Jones would benefit from a change of scenery. The same with the New York Giants. But the thing is, this upcoming draft class is so weak at that quarterback position. The reason why I'm so off on the New York Giants right now, their division is tough as hell. The Dallas Cowboys have owned this franchise over the last few years. The Philadelphia Eagles have significantly have way more talent, significantly way more talent than the New York Giants. The Washington Commanders, they're always a tough team for the Giants, but the Giants give them tough battles as well. It's going to be an uphill battle for the Giants to make a realistic shot towards the playoffs in this division for this upcoming season. Brian Dable is going to be the head coach for the next couple of years. He's a great offensive mind. Daniel Jones is just the expendable quarterback. We all know what he is. And if Daniel Jones doesn't play well, they have Drew Locke, who is a solid backup. And I'm not saying that he's going to be a starter. But if Daniel Jones go out there and he has the turnovers like how he had this season, they're going to put in Drew Locke. Brian Dable 
legit set down Kenny Galladay and that huge salary when he wasn't playing up the standard and just say, I'm done with this. He may say the same with Daniel Jones as well. And I hope that's not the case. But I'm not going to come on here and say that Daniel Jones is just terrible. It's all on him. No. The New York Giants and ownership let this kid down because they did not put the right offensive lineman in front of him. They hired horrible coaches over and over again. And you did not have the right wide receivers out there for this kid. And Saquon Barkley missed time as well in the past. Dealing with a torn ACL injury and dealing with an ankle injury as well. I think that Joe Shane is doing the right thing here. I see a lot of people on Twitter right now. They're saying, hey, he's just doing the stupid thing. He's not doing anything stupid. He's being smart. If you go out there and they franchise tag Saquon Barkley again, for one, you piss off Saquon Barkley. And for two, you couldn't just go out there and trade him. A team may give you, what, a fifth or a sixth round pick at best because he's on a one-year deal. They just let him go, which was a smart thing to do because you just franchise tagged him the year before. Now, when you look at this defense, they no longer have Wink Martindale as a defensive coordinator, which sucks. Wink Martindale was a very good defensive coordinator for the New York Giants, and they blitzed a lot. And he put a lot of heart and soul into that defense. I still think that their defense is going to be in a very good situation. You have Shane Bowen now as your brand new defensive coordinator. The first move that they made, they went out there and they traded for Brian Burns. They paid him a lot of money. You have a very solid pass rushing duo with him and Kayvon Thibodeau. Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be a star. 11 and a half sacks on the season in year number two, three forced fumbles. You also have Dexter Lawrence, who was one of the better interior tackles in the NFL. Only four and a half sacks on the season, but he was getting double teamed and triple teamed at times. You just can't go out there and double and triple team him anymore because Brian Burns, he can go out there, he can beat one-on-one -on -one coverage. And the same with Kayvon Thibodeau as well. This is the one thing I'll say about Kayvon Thibodeau. He gets off to a slow start, and that's what happened in year number two. If he can just come straight out the gate, I think the New York Giants defense can really save them because of the town that they have. And Deontay Banks, early into the season, he struggled. But after week five, he started to look very good. I think Deontay Banks can be a number one corner. They no longer have a Dory Jackson here. But having a guy like Deontay Banks, who had two interceptions, 11 pass deflections from Maryland, and he's one of those guys you look at is a press man corner can go out there on the outside. If he can go to his fullest potential, we're talking about a guy that can be one of the better corners in the NFL. Hopefully he can work out in this brand new system with Shane Bowen. They have Trey Herndon at the other cornerback position. He's 28 years old. He's been around the NFL for some years now. He's a solid cornerback to have. They lost Xavier McKinney, but they drafted Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota. Similar safety to Xavier McKinney. They're going to miss Xavier McKinney, by the way. Xavier McKinney was a very good safety. He's now with the Green Bay Packers. Then you also got Bobby Okereke in last year's fragrancy class as well. And he had a very good season with the New York Giants. So piece by piece, they're trying to fix and they're trying to patch up certain holes on this roster. Every offseason. I like that. They'll address the offensive line like how they did this offseason. And last offseason, their run, their run stopping was a problem. At the linebacking spot, they had to bring in Jalen Smith last season, which was terrible. So they went out there and they bring in Bobby Okereke. He's a way better player than Jalen Smith. And they made the playoffs when Jalen Smith was on the roster. Jalen Smith was no longer the same linebacker. And Bobby Okereke is good. You have Micah McFadden as well. Give him time. He's still young. He had a lot of horrible moments this season, but a lot of good moments as well. I think he could be a very good player. They also have Isaiah Simmons as well. Isaiah Simmons is just one of those players you look at and you just say, whatever. They made a trade to get him from the Arizona Cardinals. The kid is either a safety or a linebacker. I feel bad for him. It's a place for him on the roster, just not as a starter. And right now he is a backup linebacker. With that being said, the Giants would be better off if they just let Daniel Jones play through this contract for this upcoming season, see where he's at. Maybe you can use him as trade bait. You could possibly get a second or a third round pick for him. Because I can't say this right here. If you put Daniel Jones with the Las Vegas Raiders, maybe that's a better situation for Daniel Jones in general because of the weapons that they have. And you just get you some draft capital. And you restart. Because at the end of the day, Brian Dable did not select Daniel Jones. Joe Shane did not select Daniel Jones. Now, they went out there and they paid Daniel Jones. But they didn't draft this kid. But something has to give. Daniel Jones at his best is the Alex Smith type of quarterback and to be real with you guys, the roster that the Giants have is just not good enough at that position. They need a guy that's going to go out there and help elevate the talent around him instead of the talent around him trying to elevate him and bring him up to the next level. 
It's one of those weird cases to where you can come on here and say that it's 50-50. The organization deserves blame, and the same with Daniel Jones as well. Because some of the turnovers just makes you shake your head. And then at other times as well on film, you just feel bad for Daniel Jones because as soon as he snaps the ball, it's three defenders in his face. And Andrew Thomas is the only offensive lineman that's trying to help. Or John Michael Smith. That's it. I go back to that San Francisco 49ers game and I just shake my head. But to give Daniel Jones some credit because it seems like I'm hating right here against the Arizona Cardinals and the second half of that game, he was phenomenal. If he can play more like that in the future and he can be more consistent, Maybe you can keep him around for a couple years. But at the, at the end of the day, Daniel Jones is not a franchise quarterback, and the Giants really did ruin his development by hiring guys like Joe Judge and Jason Garrett. But let me know in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about the New York Giants, and should they keep Daniel Jones around for the next couple of years? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last one of you guys stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless. Peace.